Hey there, I'm Benjamin from Love's Data, and in this video I'm going to explain the different targeting options you can use for your display campaigns in Google AdWords. I'll also outline some of the advantages and disadvantages to running display campaigns and how you can combine display targeting for your ads. Display targeting lets you control who sees your ads and where they're displayed on the Google Display Network. And if you're new to running display campaigns, then I do recommend starting with a remarketing campaign because they're better at driving conversions. We'll talk about remarketing and the other display targeting options in this video. Let's get started. There are advantages and disadvantages to running display network campaigns. In terms of advantages, you can reach people who are not necessarily aware of your product or service. If we think about a search campaign, someone actually has to enter a search term in order to see your ad. They need to be looking for something. While a display campaign means we can show ads to people as they're simply browsing, they aren't actively searching. We can reach people throughout the buying cycle using the different targeting methods. We can reach people to drive initial awareness or use targeting to show ads to people looking to purchase a certain product or service. The display network provides branding opportunities which aren't limited to branded keywords that we'd use in our search campaigns. And we can create engaging ads in multiple formats, including responsive ads, text, image, and HTML5 ads. The main disadvantage of display campaigns is that they're less likely to result in direct action, like conversions on your website. This is why I recommend considering using remarketing if you're just getting started, since they're more likely to result in conversions compared to the other targeting methods. The other thing to consider is that you'll need to create additional ads. In most cases, this means creating ads in multiple formats. I recommend investing in a good designer to create your ads so they're compelling and visually appealing. The first targeting option is to use display keywords. This is where we target our ads based on the content on the display network site. For example, if we entered the display keyword of beach resort, then our ads would be targeted to content that relates to beach resort. This could include blog posts about beach resorts, news articles, and more. Just remember, this is targeting the context, not someone searching. Next are the audience targeting options. This is where we target our ads based on people's past behavior. These options allow us to target our ads to an individual rather than to the content they're viewing. We can target an affinity audience to show ads based on their areas of interest. For example, we can target our ads to people who are interested in sports and fitness. This would mean that our ads are displayed based on this area of interest, even if the person is not currently looking at sport or fitness related content. We're targeting what they're interested in, not what they're currently looking at. We can also target in-market audiences. This is similar to the affinity audience, but Google has determined that these people are actively looking to purchase a product or service. For example, targeting motor vehicles allows us to show ads to people who are looking to purchase a car. And we can also target our ads to people in our remarketing lists. For example, we could target people who've been to our website but haven't converted. Next is demographic targeting. This allows us to display our ads based on available age and gender. For example, we could choose to target our ads to people who are 35 to 44 years old. We can also target parental status and we can target household income. Demographics can be actual or inferred. For example, if someone has created an account and entered their date of birth, then where this information is available would be targeting their actual age. However, Google also uses other methods to infer demographics. For example, based on the particular websites we view, Google can estimate our age. So we can target age that has been inferred. Then we have topics. This is where ads are displayed on sites on the display network based on Google's topic classification. Topics are similar to display keywords, but they're much broader. For example, we can choose to target the topic of healthy eating and our ads will automatically be displayed on sites that Google has classified as relating to this topic. Finally, there is placement targeting. This is where we choose to display our ads on specific websites. For example, we might want to target an entire website. For example, we could target the New York Times. We're targeting the entire website. Depending on the site, in some cases, we can also target sections of the website. For example, comedy content on YouTube, 
and even individual ad units, like an ad unit on an individual page. We also have the option of targeting placements in apps. The way we structure our display campaigns is different than how we structure our search campaigns. For our display campaigns, we set the targeting for each ad group. In this example, we have a display campaign that contains two ad groups, one that uses placement targeting and another using remarketing. So the ad groups determine where our ads are displayed. You also have the option of combining targeting methods in a single ad group. Here we can see we're combining a topic target with a placement target. This means we're more specific about where we want our ads to be displayed. For example, we could target the topic of healthy eating and the placement of the New York Times, which means our ads would only display on content relating to healthy eating on the New York Times. So they're the targeting options you can use for your display campaigns. Unless you want to drive initial brand awareness, then I recommend starting with remarketing before using the other targeting methods. Remember that you can combine two or more targeting methods for each of your ad groups inside your display campaign. And it's always a good idea to create your display ads in as many formats and sizes as possible so you can achieve maximum coverage with the targeting methods that you're using. Are you running display ads? And if you are, what targeting methods are you using for your ads? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, then please like it so I know to make more videos like this. See you next time.